This is going to be a good one. I'm excited. We'll see. I, I woke up early today with uh, electricity not in my house. Ooh, uh, oh. It turns out it was just in my room and then ended up spending the entire morning trying to figure out where the electricity stopped. My, I, I might be a bit tuckered from having to deal with that this morning. But I hope I can bring proper ire to this <laughs> this film. I'm sure you can. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm Ken. I'm Andrew. And I'm Dan. And we're the Rewinders Podcast, rewinding movies to see if they hold up. And this time, we wrapped our food in a napkin and put it on a stick and walked out into the woods by watching the movie Stand By Me. Like a bunch of hobos. Thirsty for adventure. It's called a bindle. Okay. Sorry, I'm not as fancy. Dan, I believe Bindi is Steve Irwin's daughter. Bindle. Rest in not peace, you crocodile. Oh, Bindle. Got, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Vindy. No. Vin Vin Diesel. Damn it, Vin guys. Diesel, yeah. Vinny Jones? Oh, Fast and the Furious. Finally, a good movie. Vinny Jones. Vinny Jones. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, we watched Stand By Me. Um, this was a, a film that I watched quite a bit from the mid to late 80s and then i think i it just kind of fell away probably because there were other movies to watch you know robocop and other things came around movies that were better well yes go back and watch or sorry go back and listen to the three or four episode <laughs> rewinders on robocop robocop is a master class how dare you robocop is a masterpiece <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful movie anyway we we aren't talking about Can't we that. Can we just today. talk about RoboCop? I love RoboCop. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Oddly enough, as a kid, though, this was, I'd say, a dark horse influential movie in my life because it taught me a few things. Like, uh, maybe this was where I learned about mailbox baseball. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it definitely taught me to grab railroad tines to uh, see if a train's coming. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And it never worked in reality. Just like in the movie, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> and this movie also taught me as a child that every body of water is filled to the brim oh, of yes. God. Yes. And never to go in water. <laughs> Unless it's like the lake or something. Honestly, you're okay. that's probably the best thing to take away from this movie because leeches suck. <laughs> And to be honest, I mean, I grew up in Door County, Wisconsin. I don't think I ever encountered a leech, but this movie made me kind of terrified of them. Yep. I mean, I didn't grow up in Door County, but we definitely spent many years north of 29 over the summers, and I think I've only dealt with leeches once in the 33 years that I've been around. So you've only dealt with leeches once, but what about sneeches, especially on beaches? Oh, that was that was a daily occurrence between the ages of like six and ten. Damn sneeches! But but did you spend did you spend time with the starbilly sneeches? Always. Oh, the better of the sneeches. Wow, wow! You elitist prick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. Same boat, Joe. We watched it a lot. My parents introduced me to this at a very young age, probably too young, uh, looking back in retrospect, but um, I appreciate it because, yes, I was terrified of leeches after this movie all throughout childhood. I uh, <laughs> I was morbidly curi- curious about dead bodies like like they are in the movie. It's just like all these things introduced to me at probably too young of an age, but I'm still glad that I saw it at the age I did. And, and the vomit scene still, to this day, is probably the most rewound scene in this movie for our household. Why? <laughs> you know what? No, no, no. I take that back. I don't want I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> because it's the only scene in this movie worth watching. I think, for me, it's crazy, too, coming back to it after all these years. Because every time I watch it, I'm older. And the last time I watched it was maybe about seven or eight years ago when I bought the Blu-ray, maybe. And coming back to it now, I'm just like, holy crap, he's in it? Holy crap, he's in it. And it's just like, it's like a yeah. gift. It's like, I completely forgot John Cusack's in this movie. I was like, holy crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was I a surprise. I think I've seen this movie once. There are scenes that I 
I have memories of, but I don't know if it's because I got like linked to a like one of the scenes from the movie from something, and like the scene was pertinent to what the conversation was happening. But I like I don't remember watching this movie in its entirety. Now, I've never seen the movie before, and uh, really no interest in watching it, especially after someone's like, "Oh, one of the kids dies." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> what? And I was like, "Oh, that's just going to set me up for an entire depressing time." So I. I'm not going to watch this movie. And it just, nothing I heard about this movie made me want to go watch it. And uh, I was glad to see that even though I was misinformed, I was still right. (laughs) Well, I mean, it it only gets dark if you, if you blend reality and and, and movie magic. Because unfortunately, yes, River Phoenix did die a little while after. 1993. And some one of them, 93, yep. one of them did get stabbed in the throat at the end of the movie. That, that's but, him. Like, off screen, and who cares? That's him. Yep. River Phoenix um, died later on. So the one kid who died in the movie dies later on in real life. Andy, they all die. No, all those characters are going to die. No, no. If you're going chronologically, all of them should be dead by now or close to dying. Yeah, that was that was 59, right? They're probably not all dead. Cancer? They're they just were speaking. <laughs> like they're what twelve? They may have stopped. I believe my dad told me he started smoking around twelve. So when I watched this movie and they're smoking, I, I couldn't believe it. It's like wow, that that was would have been my dad. Sure, I think I took my first drag off of a cigarette probably between the ages of eight and ten. Oh, same here. Hated it and then decided never to do it again. I didn't start smoking until I was in college and then it was for like six months. I'm just like, this is too expensive. I'm not keeping up this habit. (laughs) Expensive back then, expensive now. Holy crap. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I know my dad threw a butt one time and went in the house and I just picked it up and took a drag off of it quick and yeah, that was was fun. (laughs) (laughs) It's an easy way to tell that story. Uh It was... Fun, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Ken? When did you first take a puff of a cigarette? He, he borrowed Ace's cigarette. Uh, I was super drunk, and I took a puff of a cigarette, and I was like, "I'm drunk. I don't know if when this you is were doing eight? anything." No, when I was a fucking adult, because <laughs> smoking eight? never appealed to me. It's expensive. I've always been a cheap ass. Uh, it's just it's gross, and I don't. I I yeah. don't need that. Although they're kids taking, you know, smoking cigarettes in this movie, but it's very obvious that their opinions on cigarettes are drived by what they have heard or have seen. Yes. Yes. Especially the comments about them being the best after supper and things like that. Yeah. It's a learned That's behavior. How kids operate. That... They've been told that this is what you do, and they've seen adults do yep. it. So, speaking of seeing things. The way that this, that that's a terrible Try transition again, into Joe. the movie summary. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> no, I shall not. I will, I will drive this transition into the ditch and leave it there in the no, middle of winter. No, you're not going to try to like, just eat the pie that is this terrible, terrible transition. That was stand by me. <laughs> Can we not get rid of all these uh, perfect end of the movie End of the podcast uh, wrap-up lines. I feel like we're finished already. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to reach into your underwear and pull out the leech of transitions? Ooh. Uh, ooh. Leech would never have gotten in there. <laughs> Fair. Not enough room, huh, oh. Stephen King wanting to torture kids and put dick blood in a movie because that's what a movie <laughs> needs. <laughs> Fucking dick not blood. not any different than normal blood. It's all, it's all the same. <sighs> Except for where it's from. That he could have Dan, pulled a leech off blood his from arm. from your arm doesn't make your arm bigger, does it? <laughs> it doesn't make your arm You don't stiff. get an engorged <laughs> arm. Are we, are we going to... No, you know what? I'm not going to argue this. You're right. That's fine. Okay. Different. Yeah, it's different uh, stuff that the blood fills. But still, it's where it's from. It could have been blood from anywhere, and the kid could have passed out. No, this had to have been... <sighs> Fuck this movie. He actually, uh, later they specified it was on his balls. So that's even worse. So it's not dick blood, it's ball blood. His, oh, his God. scrotum, correct. It might have been pee, because that's where pee is stored. I thought pee was stored in the poop. Uh, in your balls? Oh, pee God. is stored in the balls. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> so let's talk about things that we liked about no, this no, movie. No, 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 no. Oh, no, we need the, no, we gotta do the, we gotta do the synopsis. Oh, God. Speaking of stored in the balls, what else is stored in this movie? Okay, summary, 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 summary. 
So uh, it's a, the movie is basically follows two sets of kids, <laughs> one that is like preteens and one that are teenagers. They're both doing the same thing, sort of, of going to go and find this uh, dead body where they they know where it is. They're just going to go to it. And I'm saying sort of because I'm just making a, a general summation story here. So, but the movie tends to follow the preteens closer than the teenagers because let's face it, the teenagers are boring as all hell because they're teenagers and teenagers what left to their own devices in small town do stupid bad things. Joe, I guess the teenagers in this movie are bashing mailboxes, what? getting getting prison tattoos, <laughs> racing each other, and <laughs> causing trucks to swerve and smash all their logs into the ground like. <laughs> The teenagers in this movie are really having a time. Those cobra tattoos are going to look like trash days. in the matter of days. The minute days. that they're healed, they are going to look Correct. like absolute trash. It's not going to last. They're going to have to keep cutting them again and again to make it work. But they're not even tattoos. They're scarification. Uh, no, 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 no. So you, you you cut it into your arm, and then you take ink, and you smear it into the Oh, wound my God, it hurts. It kind of leaves it as an actual tattoo. It hurts. That's fairly true. It hurts just thinking about it. Why? Well, they didn't show yeah, that. Yeah, they did. Then, yeah, so they. one of they them had some it. ink around it. Yeah, it was using a, a cartridge from a straight razor. I didn't see it, so... Uh, anyway. So, uh, we follow these kids. The preteens go through, I'll say, adventure shenanigans between almost dying and just, like, having dumb stuff happen to them. And between them leaving their town to finding the dead body, they learn a little something about themselves. The teenagers, not so much. They don't learn anything about themselves other than if you point a gun at them, they'll yeah, back I was just going to say they learn to back off. Way to go, Ace. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland is such a dick in yes. 80s movies. He's so yeah, good at it. that typecast a lot. All, all, not a lot, like all the time. I don't think he's been cast as a character that isn't some kind of asshole. 24? I haven't seen 24, so I have no idea. Still an asshole. Killing people in 24 hours, he's still an asshole. Hey, he's killing terrorists. That's different. America! <laughs> gotta kill terrorists! Of which, I want to go off on a side tangent of uh, Peacekeeper, because also oh, peacekeeper. killing people. Uh -huh. But To keep the oh, peace. Oh man, that's a fun show. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's ba the basic summary. They go, they find the body. They uh, the preteens push back the teens after the teens are like the man and keeping the preteens down. So they finally push back, and then they tell you how everyone goes on in life without showing you, and no one has better friends than when they were twelve. So think about your friends when you were twelve. Those are the best friends of your goddamn life, and you don't realize it. Your friends now, they're shit. What grade was I in 12? Is that 6th grade? Because it's 6 plus your six, no, your age minus 6, because that's when you go to school. Is it? What? Also depends on whether or not your parents held you back. Or is it 5th grade? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, Yay, math. The math pod. <laughs> We're going to take this in a whole different direction. You guys want to no, do thanks. some derivatives real quick? If I do that, I'll just, I'll just use Excel. Thank God, because I forgot how to do that. Let's do some fractals. Okay. Uh, we, I think, did we just discuss our, discussed ourselves in our nerditude? I think we might have. I didn't. I didn't talk about Star Wars or anything, so I didn't go too deep. How about that Boba Fett? No, we're gonna talk about <laughs> okay. what we like about into this that. movie. Their <laughs> goddamn <laughs> treehouse is yeah, a that is an awesome freaking treehouse. mansion. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, anybody else get massive Goonie vibes when uh, Vern shows up, and it, you know it's the same thing as uh, Chunk from. Goonies. Did the Goonies come first, or was it, or was it Stand by Me? Uh, Stand by Me was late eighties, um, I think. Goonies was what? 84? Goonies was eighty five. Uh, eighty eighty four, and this one was eighty six. Uh, this believe. was eighty six. Ah, because yes. So Goonies was first. Yeah. This movie's a freaking rip off. It's it's the exact same feeling. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like them making fun of Chunk, like just like bemoaning the fact that he's there. Honestly, for some reason, while I was watching this movie, I got a lot of Sandlot vibes. Oh, I could see and that. that might be the reason why I was so upset with this movie was because it wasn't Sandlot. It was filled with a bunch of terrible characters. Anyways, we're not in dislike. <laughs> uh, there were some some things I liked, but yeah, the Treehouse was dope. I wish I had Treehouse like that when I was a kid. When I was in middle school, my friends and I, <clears throat> they were like, "Hey, we're gonna build a, a treehouse at so and so's house." I'm like, "Cool, I'll come and help." And I show up, and they're 
using these one inch aluminum nails to put in the supports. And listen, I am not a DIY kind of guy. I don't really, I can't fix things around the house. I like break them more when I try to fix them. But I knew that that was not going to work. And I pulled like the big nails out. I'm like, you're going to need to use these. And the guy was like, oh no, I don't know. My dad won't like that so much. I'm like, that's the only way you're going to keep this thing up. Right. So he, he relented and, and started. we started using the bigger nails. And after we put in the, the square bottom, uh, he got up on the base to do some like cross work and stuff like that. And the side that they put up before I got there almost instantly collapsed. Sadly, he busted his wrist by falling out of the oh, treehouse. So we stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't get a cool treehouse in the end, but... That usually does put a damper on the whole thing. Yeah, Dad Dad didn't care for us trying to build that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the buddy of mine built a treehouse, but it wasn't like, it wasn't a house. It was just a platform on stilts wrapped around a tree. Hey, that's cool, too. It wasn't, though. Yeah, did you guys all go up and smoke it? No, up? like, there wasn't a lot of space to do anything up on the treehouse. <laughs> like, it was probably a three foot by three foot platform. Uh, other things I liked about this movie... Uh, was actually the barf scene. The kid starts telling a story. It's not a very good story, but they continue doing the story as if the kid were telling the story a lot, like a Christmas story when Ralphie's doing his imaginations with Black Bart, only a little bit less cartoony. Is this just pointing out things that this movie stole? Uh, no, because uh, that was probably... Christmas story's I, pretty fucking, old. They just did a really good job of making it look old. It's... I mean, yeah. it's okay. not like ripping off. It's not a straight rip off. However, he's telling the story. They have a fairly good uh, what's going on up until the point where everyone starts vomiting and everyone, even the crowd starts vomiting pie. Yep. Blueberries specifically. Yeah. And uh, I liked it. That is what makes the movie palatable or that part of the movie palatable because it's just blueberries. It's, it's not actually like throw up. And in fact, you see the cannon out the side of their like, all they're doing is well, open their mouth and shooting the thing up, up from the back of the head and you can you can tell that's how they're doing that scene and i feel like they did it purposely kind of shoddy in that sort of way just to one save costs but also to he's telling a story it's like a kid's story so it makes sense to have it kind of shoddily put together out there yeah, for sure. It's like it goes back to uh, Princess Bride when you guys were talking about the boat looking all funky because it's it's a kid imagining it. Same same thing. They stole mm-hmm. this from Princess Bride. No, no. But, ah. but if you remember <laughs> Goonies, but if you remember Goonies when they're asking Chunk to tell them the truth, and he's got his hand in the blender and he's you know talking about the story where he he goes up on up on the balcony and throws up and then everybody starts throwing up all over each other. <laughs> but they didn't show it. They didn't show it. No. Right. Yeah. So that's movies one hundred and one. Show, don't tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did like in that in the puke scene though at the end where uh, Lardass is leaning back and enjoying his good works of the Lord. In the background, there's like there has to be like a mini hose where they just shoot purple up in the air occasionally. <laughs> so it's just like this rip tide of like spurts of puke get, throwing up in the air. That's fun. I don't know if I saw that before. Yeah, that that scene is fun and adds adds great pleasure to the movie. I don't know. Castor oil in a, what, is that a tequila bottle? Yeah. Vodka? A giant-ass <laughs> bottle of castor oil. He chugs it all down. That's That was actually almost more cringy to me than any sort of vomit that could have happened. I don't know how he kept himself from vomiting until eating all those pies. Right? Well, that's that's another thing. He didn't even he didn't eat the pies. He took like what five six bites out of the center of the pies and kept saying "done." That's not eating a whole pie. <laughs> but then, honestly, if we look at this story, he says he's there for revenge. Yeah. Although he never actually says why, what revenge. Everybody making fun of him because everyone treats him terribly. Everyone treats him terribly. You're supposed to just intuit that. It's implied. They- kind of say it they, yeah. okay they say that everyone in town no one calls him davy they all call him lardass oh he had a name everyone beats him up everyone puts him down saying here's a bunch of things everyone does to him so he's going to get his revenge okay i was uh, looking at this story and then everyone else in the movie who cares about will wheaton uh, <laughs> telling him that he's such a great writer and you look at the story like there might be some room for growth but 
Yeah, I can kind of see where they're going there. He's still young. Kid's got to start somewhere. At least in this Stephen King movie, there's somebody in this movie who isn't always a total asshole, but they did end up dying before the movie even started. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I loved your comment about can there be a Stephen King movie or story that just doesn't have a town full of assholes. And <laughs> it's it's very true. It's very true. I, that was coming out in the things I don't like about this movie. It's just Stephen King. You got to warn me, guys. If we're going to be watching a Stephen King movie, I can't go in not knowing it's a Stephen King movie. I have to because I have to prepare myself <laughs> for a town full of assholes. I have to know that that's what I'm going into. <laughs> Otherwise, it just ruins my day for like three or four days consistently. I I finally got back on track yesterday after two days of not watching this movie. I forget all the time that this is a Stephen King Yeah, same with Shawshank. I always forget that's one, but everything takes place in Castle Rock, so that's always the connecting pin. Right. Well, also, it's a, I mean, that one's a prison movie. You kind of expect that one to be dark and grimy and not good people. Yeah. And to swim through poop. Yeah, these things happen. Poop, <laughs> leeches, what's the difference? <laughs> Staph infections, I guess. So watching this this time around, it's it's actually very interesting to go through the list of who's all in this movie. So it's directed by Rob Reiner. Good, nice. We got, as you said, Will Wheaton as Gardy, River Phoenix as Chris, Corey Feldman as Teddy, Jerry O'Connell as Vern, Kiefer Sutherland as Ace, uh, Richard Dreyfus is the the old man writing his novel, and then you have John Cusack as Denny. I mean, how do you get all those people in one movie? Do uh, you get them while they're still young? That's true. Before they've made any other movies. <laughs> yeah, it's just that's a lot of names. But also back then, Stephen King was uh, going to be a big thing, and he, he, he was uh, pushing his stuff through. He, Christine, and whatever else. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of cocaine going on back then. And uh, a lot of people just wanting to rip through these movies. And uh, so you get people like easily get R- Rob Reiner on there. Once you get someone like Rob Reiner to direct your movie, you start getting people be like, oh, he's OK. Yeah, I'll be in that. Especially if they're kids trying to get their acting career going. They're definitely going to jump on something like that. I'll have to go on the cocaine train and let you know how it uh, works out for me if I end up in movies. <laughs> No, no, that's the people who are making the movies are on the cocaine. The people oh. who are joining the movies aren't necessarily. You have to you have to know people on cocaine <laughs> and make it movies. Fair enough. I guess there's nothing I can do. Yeah, you can make your own movie, Joe. I can. Then then I get the cocaine. <laughs> uh, we can make another Scarface, I guess. I don't know. Around here, I'd have better luck probably finding meth than cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Or actual just literal snow. Oh, bye. We keep losing. Sorry, Dan. Dan is I didn't mean to offend not you, Dan. stable Whoa. today. You know it is stable. Where they put the horses? Yes. <laughs> I, I tried to find a segue really quick in my notes, but the amount of times I wrote, I hate this movie, <laughs> uh, is pretty much the only stable thing in here. I mean, there were some things that I did like about this movie. Uh, you know, how the kids were frequently talking to each other, just... Uh, not frequently. Actually, very infrequently were they talking to each other uh, in in ways, in supportive ways, which were kind of heartfelt and kind of made you feel good about yourself. Uh, things I didn't like, 75% of this movie is just name-calling. Awful? Like, the it's entire... It's awful. This entire movie is awful. The dialogue is just 100% calling people, well, not 100%, but 75%, Just calling people names, and that's like, mm, not all that great. That's what it is like to be young boys sometimes. Yeah, it's like that being young boys sometimes. Should we, uh, whether or not he's actually writing young boys, or whether or not he's writing uh, what he wants young children to be, or encouraging young children to be, who knows? Uh, I know he's encouraging people not to be in shop class because that's where the fucking idiots go, apparently. Apparently, the only smart kids go into writing, if that's not saying something about himself. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty good. I feel like, are you, are you, are you bitter about something, Ken? <laughs> I'm like... just sick of the uh, writers. Oh, God damn it. Okay, okay we're good. I thought my, writer, my levels were off for a second. Uh, I thought my level. Nope. God damn it. Ah, <laughs> he is that angry, folks. I'm kind of sick of the uh, 
trope of writers writing in. The best occupation to be is writers. You see it in way too many books. I honestly didn't even like realize that he was writing till the end, unless I missed something. Uh, I mean, I think he was a newspaper reporter. Well, yeah, that was all the voiceovers. Or, oh. No, he was writing his book. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. entire movie was him writing All the voiceovers book. were him basically writing his book. But I didn't know that he was writing a book. That's well. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna clarify something. I missed the first like minute and a half because I started this, and then had to run upstairs. You you only missed a little bit. Let me go back. I know we already did uh, going into this movie. What were you thinking? Uh, and I already said that going into this movie, I assumed it was going to be a sad movie, and that I wasn't going to get very well into this movie. And the movie kicks off. With a guy sitting in his truck, looking about ready to shoot himself in the head, looking over at a newspaper about a guy who got stabbed in the throat. And this is supposed to draw me in to a movie that's supposed to be set. No, 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 no. That move that set this entire movie off in a terrible place for me. And I just had a hard time getting over it up until he shot the garbage can. You mean that's not what you were doing when you were 11 or 12? Uh I mean, I was doing stupid stuff. I was making ramps in the driveway and uh, broke my arm because they were not fixed together. And I was going over on rollerblades. I was doing stupid stuff as a kid, but I wasn't grabbing my parents' guns and waving them around to kids. And, uh, well, I also wasn't going off into the deep woods following train tracks all by myself either. Yeah, but this was the 60s. Mainly because there's not that much. Right. So... This is the golden age that all those old fuckers want to say were the greatest times <laughs> where where their parents could hold their ears to a fucking uh, stovetop. Is that is that what made America great back then? Well, I mean, this is the time where you could smoke at any age and walk into a store and slap down some, some coins and get some beef. I mean, get some raw hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give it to him. That was a lot of hamburger for a dollar seventy or whatever it was. I mean, I mean, think about it, Ken. How, how frequently nowadays do you witness kids going around smashing mailboxes with a baseball bat? It's definitely <laughs> no, no. They use the cars now because they forgot how to drive. It's definitely a forgotten time. <laughs> Have you ever run into or tried to hit a Rubbermaid mailbox? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll say you get yourself one of those standard uh, metal ones that they were hitting with baseball bats. Those things fall over with a light breeze, but you get a rubber made uh, mailbox and you run into it with a truck. Your truck will form around that mailbox. <laughs> Not personal experience. I can kind of see that it's uh subverting expectation and putting people into more of danger than they realize, but that's a risk you got to take. When you jump into a swamp, you might just get leeches on your scrotum. When you go to a pie-eating contest, you, you might just get some backsplash on you. <laughs> okay, I think I got through all my rant. I, <laughs> I appreciate your uh, letting me go off because this movie just really touched me in a bad place. This movie is just, it's not a story that needed to be told. I, I don't care about any of the characters. Like, I have no reason to feel for any of these children. They're a bunch of little assholes going and doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, what about River Phoenix's character? He was actually not an asshole at all. He's dead, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the worst thing they did for that kid is put give him an off-screen death. Yeah, yeah. You do kind of feel bad for him once you find out, like, yeah, he stole some lunch money and he decided to give it back. That was a lot of milk money if she was able to go get herself a skirt. Um, and you kind of feel bad for him that, you know, he's been given into the American system, which has been there to fuck people over. <sighs> they set their expectations. Honestly, it's a real look into society. Well, yeah, you have the younger kids hearing about a dead body and there's no real good that can come from like going to see it now if they go to the police and tell the police where it is that they overheard a conversation that someone accidentally found it that's a decent process but for them to actually go out to it to i don't know see a dead body look at it poke it with a stick <laughs> i mean it does speak to that level of people have that morbid curiosity about certain things you know like car crashes i would say anything that kind of like makes you feel a little bit of your mortality sure i mean it is 
kind of like that it expressed in the story sure but there's always two different type of people here there are so one time i was driving home from some place it was after a packer game it's kind of nice out and we come up across a uh, across an accident where somebody had been on their motorcycle without any pads or shirts or shoes or helmet and my brother's like oh let's pull over and help he was in the uh, air force he thought he could help with the, him being uh, in the military police area honestly i feel like he just wanted to stop and take a look and also help a little bit me on the other hand went the other way because i don't i know i do not want to see that shit there is a more to big curiosity but not about seeing bones sticking through skin and stuff like that if he's a first responder then there's kind of a you're a first responder to be a first responder and you stop for those yeah. things but what kind of glory were they hoping to get out of this the kids nothing good just they want to be on the a news little bit of fame yeah put their smiling faces all over the news being like oh look i found this body meanwhile their parents are looking at these kids being like wow what assholes this wasn't a live person. This person had their own thing. There are people hurting because this kid is dead. Well, I think that's that's initially actually why they decided to go out to find the body. Because there were reports that the child was missing for three days. So when they overheard the fact that the body was out there, they wanted to be heroes and go bring it back. They wanted to make something of that summer and essentially have their name cemented in history in that town. But did they go about it the right way? No. They could have told an adult, and like like they said at the end of the movie, they could have driven there <laughs> and just got the body. And I'm certainly uh, actually on board with these kids being the age they are. They were definitely in those in-between ages where they're trying to be super grown up, but they still have that kid mentality. Yeah. And I think they nailed that right on the head. So it kind of makes sense for those kids to get it. But the uh, I guess the other ones would just be morbid curiosity. What, what about the old kids? Why would What kind of glory did they think they would get out of it? They'd be the cool kids? Were, was it the old kids who caused it? No, no. They The older kids just found the ki- the body. The, the kid died on his own volition. He's picking blueberries and didn't and didn't hear a train coming down the track, I guess. I'm still kind of wishy-washy on how this kid died. <laughs> Because if you, he was hit by a train while blueberry picking, but, which is yeah, but I mean, you look at the, you look at the kid and he's like, there's no missing limbs, there's no real gore per se, except for some bruises and red splotches. It's like, how did he exactly get hit by the train to leave him looking that good? And on top of that, how did he not hear the damn train coming down the track? Regardless, it was a Shinkansen. <laughs> Speaking of blueberries, they're also in the pie. Do you think that's on purpose? Oh, oh, I never realized that. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. God damn it, Stephen King. Right? If there's blueberries all over that place and you can just pick them in the wild, maybe that's just something everyone has there. And that's what the key thought of because it's like, yeah, everybody makes blueberry pies because there's blueberries everywhere. That's fair. Did this take place in Maine? Is that where dairy is? Oh, this was in like Texas or something, wasn't it? Wasn't it in Texas? Nebraska? No. I thought it was in Washington State. Yeah, it's over Washington State. This is Cat. This is Castle Rock. Oh, right. Castle Rock. That's right. <laughs> that means nothing to me. Is that anything like Fraggle Rock? Oh, Oregon. It's it's Maine. The car- a fictional town of Castle Rock, Maine. Okay. Well, Washington State's like Maine, but just on the other side. Right, right. No, no. The movie, the movie is around uh, Castle Rock, Oregon, and the book is Castle Rock, Maine. Okay. I'm going to go against the grain here with, uh, I felt like to some extent I could uh, connect to or relate to or understand the position of the dramatic backgrounds of these kids and their different, their struggles that they had with life. Now, does that mean I had struggles with life? No, but I did know other kids throughout the years growing up who didn't have it great. And I felt like in a lot of ways they did portray how some of those kids would behave. And I don't know if it's strictly because of the background, you know, nature versus nurture thing. But I felt like the variations of how the kids had their own versions of acting out to an extent, felt natural. Now, uh, the Vietnam kid, I want to go to war, and uh, but um, what's his name? Corey, what's your Feldman? name? Teddy. Oh. Some of his stuff I felt was a little over the top, but that's that's just Corey Feldman, I think. Yeah, sometimes you got an over-the-top kid, overly energetic, yada yada. Is it weird to you that all of the kids in this movie, every single one of them, has an abusive parent? Or do you think that's just 
one of those cool things from back in the 60s? I don't know. That's that's a good question. <laughs> it feels it feels like a 60s thing. Yeah. I'll say it depends. So we had people in the movie who said uh, they were in Korea. So the Korean War was either ongoing at the time or had already finished. And so you have people back home with probably undiagnosed PTSD running households. Same thing occur again, you know, with Vietnam and coming home with undiagnosed PTSD and having families. So maybe it's just one of those waves where there were a lot of people who couldn't handle all the trauma that they experienced and to be able to get out of that and have a raise a good family. And now like these kids across the scale, they weren't all abused kids physically. Yeah. I mean, there was emotional abuse for sure. I mean, Gordy was ignored. He was ignored and he is definitely like the, the Lord of the Rings, like, you know, Boromir should have lived. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's that shitty feeling of your, knowing your parents wish you were the one who died. They say, yeah, he wasn't beat, but he was, definitely emotionally whipped and obviously we know that there was physical abuse to teddy in terms of um was it fern yeah he didn't have a whole lot of yeah he had an older brother i assumed his older brother was just vicious to him all the time well yeah his older brother's just in the gang but and, that's yeah that's brothers oh that's not just older brothers as someone who had two of them Sure, they got mean sometimes, but... But also, Vern is the one that comes out the cleanest in the end, too. Well, he had to go on to make sliders. I thought he was a forklift <laughs> drive. <laughs> Depends on what string theory universe this goes into. <laughs> Whichever one Jerry O'Connell's happy in, that's all I care. <laughs> I don't care. Maybe his next slide will be the slide home. Oh, but no, they didn't fix that fence. Anyways... <laughs> I'm trying, I'm really trying to unobjectively, non-biased, find something I don't like in this movie. And that's very difficult for me. I was so bored watching this movie. See, and I could see that. Interesting. I could see like, that. Like, I have so many other movies that I could watch, and we listed them all already. Like, The Sandlot, <laughs> or Goonies. This was not, to me, this was not a story that needed to be told. I feel the exact same way. They never give you a reason to care about these kids. I give, I, I can completely understand just using another movie as my crutch, and that would be Highlander 2. I took Joe's advice and started watching it, and I don't know why. I <laughs> Because it's an amazing piece of film. I am, I am like three quarters of the way through, and that's after three nights of watching. I am running on fumes. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Highlander 2, I will certainly watch at least two more times in my life. This movie... Will never be watched under my own power. I guess it just had to be watched at a certain time, and maybe it is nostalgia playing into it. But this is interesting to me because I've never actually met people who have hated this movie. So this is very interesting. I like this conversation. But also, we're not coming to it with nostalgia. It's not our oh shit dog. It's not our oh shit dog. <laughs> Dog's gone crazy. Oh, get that dog on the internet. That internet dog. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. I'll just mute myself and y'all go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm seriously objectively trying to find something. Just give me, give me a few here. I'm just trying to think about it. I'll say that there's a possibility that there's a generation gap for this movie. It's geared towards a certain group of people. A, the nostalgia people who lived as kids during the time that this was... Uh, this movie was placed, could remember back to that time and probably enjoy that. Then there are the people that grew up in a similar fashion in a small town with a lot of countryside where it was very much accepted just to wander out with your friends, maybe for a full day and no one keep track of you. That would be me. And then once you start losing that connection and stuff like that, maybe this film isn't as appealing anymore to groups of people who didn't have one of those pockets to connect to this film because like you said you found it boring and i and and he said you know like you can understand why this is not a movie about action it's a movie about characters it's about I, i'm gonna say it kids talking it out and they happen to be walking <laughs> to a dead body and that's kind of the movie how that they interact with each other on the way there i can understand that not being everyone's cup of tea but i really like 
things that dig deep into characters. So, and and that's that's where I completely disagree with the comments before. I, I feel like the characters in this movie are very fleshed out. I like the characters in this movie because oh, I didn't. There's a I lot. never said that they weren't fleshed out. I'm saying that the the way that this this movie is framed, and it could be because I missed the like first few minutes of the movie. I I don't care. <laughs> There, this this movie doesn't give me a good enough reason to want to sit and listen to these kids talk out their hard times. The corpse isn't enough of a payoff. May I, I don't maybe it's because I wasn't in the mood wasn't in the mood for it. I mean, like oh yeah, no, that, I don't know that happens too, and that's that's unfortunate. But yeah, sometimes the mood can absolutely destroy a movie. Oh, especially a movie like this. Yes, absolutely. This is definitely a movie that you have to be in the right mood in order to watch it. And you have to know what you're getting into. So please, for the love of God, the next time we watch a fucking Stephen King movie, <laughs> let you give know. Give me a warning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that goes, that's actually a really great thing to bring up. Cause I mean, the fact that I love this movie and it's, it's definitely propped up on nostalgia for me. And we watched it a lot growing up, but I don't watch it often. I watch it maybe once every five, six years, if that. I don't clamor to rewatch this movie, but when I watch it, I love it. But yeah, it's it's not one of those movies where I'm just like, ah, oh, it's a Friday night, don't know what to do, I'm thrown in Stand By Me. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely a mood for sure, but... Yeah, for a good time. <laughs> for a good time, Stand By Me. Uh, we're, we're, as it's you guys have already pointed out... Feel a good out, movie of a summer. Oh, yes. Where you guys have already pointed out generously that all of the best characters who aren't douchebags have died before the movie begins. <laughs> <laughs> it's your standard Stephen King tropes. He likes to put these things in there. You wonder sometimes if he hates kids. And then sometimes you wonder if he thinks adults are just the worst. And I think I think more so the latter. Because it's usually the kids just trying to get by and the adults just being the worst things possible and then the kids grew up and become just as bad of adults as the adults were. that's what makes the second half of it hilarious because <laughs> you go from kids who don't necessarily deserve to be uh tormented by a clown to stupid adults just clamoring for that sweet sweet clown abuse never i never it. saw the second half i only oh. saw the first never even saw the 80s version i only started started to watch that i, I got like 20 minutes in did not not want to watch it, just I think there was something else I was doing, and then I just never went back to it. And yet, I watched the whole miniseries of The Stand, and regret it. <laughs> I started The that? Stand, and didn't finish it, because the, the episodes were like, they were doing, like, they released, like, half the season, and then... I stopped watching and never got back to watching it. Last episode I watched, Mood, they sent Moon Moon off to go get killed. Uh, what? All that I remember is that it had the production value of the Langoliers. Oh, no. And I... Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. I've never heard of that. The Langoliers? Oh, man. The... Pac- Pac-Man yep. in the sky. I was so excited to watch that as a kid. My dad was so excited to show me it. And it's just like... We were both kind of disappointed afterwards because it, it, it is such a good story. But it just... Oh, my God. The execution... <laughs> And I feel like that's kind of what sucks. I feel like I feel like a majority of the time, the best stories that could be adapted to film get the least amount of budget, and then some of the big flashier ones get made into movies with tons of money. And it's not. <laughs> oh, it sucks. It's such a great premise. <laughs> it's like Rose Red too. I, I loved that mini series, but that could have used a little bit more money and some more production value. And then there's Maximum Overdrive, which has bad production <laughs> values, bad translation. And it's a great fucking it movie is. for it. Because it's so bad. Whole soundtrack by ACDC. It's just incredible. <laughs> Stephen King just has like the craziest, absolute craziest history of movies being adapted. Like, you cannot count on quality. You cannot count on depth. You cannot count on substance. It's just a complete and utter shit show whenever a movie gets adapted by him. <laughs> I mean, everything that sounds like it would be incredible either works out because you have a decent team behind it or it it gets completely butchered to hell because the person adapting it doesn't understand crap it's like what's the one that you love dan the uh the dark tower oh god that was such a good book series everybody was clamoring for that i know it was such a good book series for years people clamored (laughs) i don't know what they did they condensed it they tried to make it all into one movie because they didn't want to try to plan sequels which they do sometimes and it's stupid and it destroyed everything 
it's super weird when they decide to make sequels for books that need or don't want to make sequels for books that absolutely need sequels and they decide to take certain books and turn them into 18 movies that cough cough the hobbit oh see i heard this yes. online and i think it, it it's absolutely true and holds up somebody somewhere on reddit at some point in time said that it's completely asinine that movie theater or movie companies don't want to make big budget trilogies and you know sagas anymore except for things that already are existing and they just beat the hell because they know it's a cash cow, like Star Wars and things like that. How do you think those movies got to that point? You're just going to reach into a bag and pull out like another another freaking Jurassic Park? You're going to pull out another another Lord of the Rings out of nowhere? No. These things existed because they took a chance and because they grew and people loved them. You're not going to have that again if you don't give the other movies the exact same shot. So instead, we just basically have the same five, six franchises being completely gutted. <laughs> And the quality is no longer there. It hasn't been for like three sequels. Well, in their defense, they're not necessarily having a lot to work. I want, I'm saying it in their defense. I actually don't know what they're being presented. <laughs> but most of the standalone stuff they're putting out right now isn't necessarily even worthy of sequels. So I, they could keep on throwing shit at a wall, see what sticks. But I mean, they need to make money. Yeah, and I, I guess that's why I'm actually shocked that they're actually doing the second part of Dune. Because I know Dune was big. It was pretty successful from what I remember, but I never in a million years thought they would have actually gone through with it. I thought they would have come up with some random BS answer as to why they weren't going to do the second half. Uh, outside of all the other Stephen King films and stuff like that, the I'll say the one character I like the least in this is Ace. <laughs> yeah. Out of everyone, he is... Just so irritatingly bad. <laughs> Not because he's a bad per, uh, actor or anything like that, but his character is just like no redeeming qualities. Yeah. Pretty much. And another Stephen King trope. Remember, an, oh, you don't remember in it, but there's the main bad guy who carves his name into the kid's belly. Just the worst of the worst people have to be the bully. In this case, he runs a log truck off a car off the road and threatens to kill his friends. Is that what he's doing? I forget. It's yeah, been a all while. Kinds of fun. Seems like a real pleasant person. And I think friends might be the uh might be really pushing it. He might just be having some uh some folks who are scared to say no to him. But yeah, he's a real bad cookie. So is Gordy's dad. Maybe Ace was the son he always wanted. But is Ace good at football? Why not? If he applied himself he could <laughs> be. It's all dad <laughs> wants is a football player. And, and 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 the shop player. The shop keep the hamburger dude gives Gordy a hard time because he doesn't like that football. Get out of my small town if you don't like football. Get out! I mean, was he really giving Gordy a hard time, or was he just doing the adult thing and trying to, like, sympathize with the kid who lost his brother? Not knowing that, like, he, the, the, the kid really, like, doesn't like that people only talk about his brother? I mean, I, I get it, but... As a stranger, what would you have to talk to this boy about? I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, I, other than the fact that, hey, I you, I know that your brother was some hot, hot shot football player. I mean, you could take random stabs and be like, so, doing good with your fishing? Catch any neat bugs lately? How many miles did you put in and walk in this summer? You still hanging around with that one of your kid? See any good trains lately? <laughs> Ever see a body? Got one bat wait, nope, 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 you don't even know about that one. You like gladiator <laughs> movies? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we triggered Rothy, watch out. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's an awful lot of meat for just one kid. Where are you bringing all that meat? It really wasn't that it was like it was like a pound of meat. It really wasn't all that much, but you know. But you watch him slapping that meat into the pile? He's picking up little pieces and slapping it in. Making it extra tender. <laughs> it's like, now son, you got the slap discount. Before you eat this, you gotta slap it good. Now I, yep. I better <laughs> hear you slap it. That tender little gushy little slap. That red meat slap. Little slurpy slap that you get with the red meat patties. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> slurpy slaps. <laughs> Slurpy slaps. 
So for those of us who've watched this before, has your view on this film changed over time? Not at all. It's exactly the same as I remember it. I don't know. I still regard this as a classic. I basically, I can tell the difference of watching it as I was younger to now, because when I was younger, the movie was all about the the exploration the kids were doing, the oh. getting from here to there. Yeah. And that was the cool part of the movie. And now, as I'm watching it as an adult, <clears throat> it's really about those kids, you know, learning about their family life, how that things happened in their family and why they ended up where they are. And then I really enjoy the summation of what happens to everybody because it ties everything up. So, yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to say character development, but the the character side of the movie is way more interesting to me now more so than the kids getting out and exploring and doing these things in the woods yeah no you you set the stage that's um i, I would look at it the exact same way when i was a kid the major point of watching this was for the barf scene because oh my god i gotta show everybody the barf scene and then the um the fact that the kids were swearing constantly it's just like oh they get to say those words <laughs> so <laughs> it, was, it was it was definitely more so watching it for for that like feeling like oh these kids are cool because they can do all that stuff whereas as an adult like you said it's it's more about the characters and yes i I love the wrap-up at the end knowing what happens to everybody i feel like i commented on this already about does the movie still stand up today and i i'll just reiterate maybe there's a, a disconnect in how people were raised or what time you know they lived could affect if you connect to this movie or not maybe i don't know. like i said i i wasn't in the mood for a like super like deep movie i wouldn't say this isn't this isn't that deep of a movie but like you know maybe i maybe i don't maybe you don't know what i'm you know and no it, it it's dramatic enough it's super deep for these kids some of the things they're crying at you're like oh kids yeah, they're kids. Okay. So it's time for a reboot. What? Mm. <laughs> oh, and, and no. the adults can be played by the adult versions of the characters, except for uh, River? Except for half the cast? Well, we never meet uh, River's parent. Kiefer Sutherland's still driving people around town <laughs> hitting mailboxes. <laughs> <laughs> He's, yes. He can still just be the bully. John Cusack's still dead. <laughs> nah, this this I, I don't think that you could remake this movie t- these days. For some reason, Patrick Stewart keeps showing up and telling Will Wheaton to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I do appreciate the character development they put in the movie. The kids dealing with what is expected of them versus what they want to do. Not yet realizing the transition of this is their life. They can do what they want to do, i.e. writing and all of them also they should all write just everyone write. it's it's obviously the right career path for everybody but honestly they got to that point way too late in the movie for me to care as much as i could because they got there with terrible trigger discipline a finger on the trigger every single time joking about how or you're telling them that the gun's not loaded and the gun's very loaded. That could have easily killed someone, and now I just feel old. God damn it. And just seeing Vern with that pistol, yikes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. As a kid, it's funny. As an adult, it's like, holy shit, stop. Somebody stop that kid. <laughs> Please, somebody, that child has a gun. But also, kids with a gun. This should terrify you. Lock your guns up, people. So that was so that was us gorging on this podcast and then vomiting all over the listeners by talking about Stand By Me. If you could like, rate, review, comment, subscribe, all that jazzy stuff. If you like 80s and 90s movies and you continue to listen to this podcast, please do those things. Share it with others. Coming up next, we will discuss Batman. 1988, I believe. 89. 89. 89. 
Batman. <laughs> so come back in two weeks when we rewind like a Batman. Maybe it was maybe it was the teens, and they just made up a story that the kid got hit by a train while he was picking blueberries. Or maybe the blueberries were bad and the kid died from blueberries. Maybe. Maybe it was Batman that killed this kid. 